suspects will go to some insane lengths to get away from the police, but very few will go as far as to jeopardize their own lives, like these daring getaway drivers. Across towards me, you're trying to carjack somebody. Here are 10 of the craziest police chases of all time. Meet 32-year-old Charles Carswell III, an armed robbery suspect who, on April the 6th of 2020, was fleeing through Oklahoma to get to Ohio. And while traveling on I-40, Charles was located and apprehended by Oklahoma State Trooper Brack Miller. Trooper Miller attempted to initiate a traffic stop, but Charles sped away as soon as he noticed the lights and sirens. Passing tents nearly struck a OCPD motorcycle officer on the inside shoulder. Charles reportedly had two handguns in the front seat and was using them to fire at the pursuing officers. While not focusing on the road, he nearly crashed into multiple cars and an officer who was conducting an unrelated traffic stop in the emergency lane. After Charles spun out, he then quickly hopped out and ran to his trunk, retrieving an AK-47 and two AR platform rifles. He then hid inside of his vehicle and fired at the oncoming officers, initiating a several hours long standoff. And during that time, officers tried to negotiate with Charles, offering him medical assistance after he was injured in the shootout. But unfortunately, he chose his fate when he lunged for his AK-47, opening him up for a barrage of gunfire from the police and Charles was pronounced dead on the scene shortly after. Sadly, we may never know exactly why Charles chose to end his life that day, but it's clear that this next suspect didn't fancy a trip to the jail either, since she opted to steal a squad car instead. On September the 2nd of 2017, 33-year-old Tasha Sponsler was reported to police for shoplifting from Minolta. Tasha fled the scene on foot, but police caught up to her a short ways down the road and placed her under arrest. But Tasha didn't plan on peacefully remaining in the patrol car.
Sasha had managed to undo her seatbelt and slip out of one of her handcuffs, then squeeze through the unlocked partition window into the front seat. And guess what was sitting in the ignition? Yeah, about that. God dang! Hey! God After about 10 minutes of erratic driving and near crashes, an officer performs a successful pit maneuver on Tasha's vehicle, and the devastating moment of impact was captured on the dash cam of what was now Tasha's patrol car. Tasha was then arrested again and transported to the police station without further incident, and it's a good thing they stopped her as quickly as they did, before she could figure out how to unlatch the holstered shotgun that was inside of the patrol car. Six months later, she would be found guilty of evading arrest with a vehicle with a previous conviction, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, escape causing serious bodily injury or threat of a deadly weapon, and aggravated assault against a public servant. Witnesses who gave testimonies during sentencing disclosed that Tasha had a history of drug use and mental illness, including bipolar disorder, but that had no bearing on her sentencing as she was still placed in prison for 45 years. That can be the expected outcome and result for someone with a history of repeat offenses, but no one could have expected the results of this next pursuit, not even the driver. On May the 20th of 2023, police were made aware of a vehicle sitting idle on Rockledge Drive with an unresponsive driver behind the wheel. Officers responded to the vehicle and got close enough to check the driver, whom they suspected was heavily intoxicated. And that's when they realized that 37-year-old Lawrence White was armed with a gun. Still in drive? Trying to get to the for now. First still in drive. Uh, see a gun, gun, gun in his, on his uh, lap. What? <laughs> All right, let's wake them up. Guy, police! Don't, don't oh, move! Don't move! Put your hands up! Let me see your hands up! Let me see your hands up! Police! Oh, let me see how they're in! Keep your hands, hands up! Keep your hands up! Don't hands up! Up. Police! Hands up! Keep your right hand up! Watch that right hand. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. What? Put your hands up! I'm not the door for the steering wheel. No, no, no. no. Okay. It's in the car. Let me see your hands. Put it in drive! Turn around. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
Lawrence had managed to bypass the blockade and get away from the stop, and as such, he's officially crossed the line into fleeing and eluding, which in Maryland can earn a suspect up to a year of prison time and $1,000 in fines, according to Maryland Statute 21904. But unbeknownst to the officers, this stop was not going to end with a trip to the pen. 8903, get uh, 61D to 270, Black Infinity. Crash, crash. Let me see your f heads. Let me see your f heads. Let me see your heads. Oh, he ejected, ejected, ejected. When Lawrence crashed into the barrier, he was thrown from the vehicle and landed in the middle of the road. And officers can be seen on dash cam performing CPR on him until the paramedics arrived. <laughs> Yeah, my, my units are on duty. They're taking care of it. Thank you. Turn the sirens off. Unfortunately, Lawrence was pronounced dead when paramedics arrived on scene, but the occupants of the vehicle that Lawrence collided with were transported to the hospital and treated for minor injuries. It's unfortunate that night didn't end differently for Lawrence, but one could say the same for this next suspect, who was paralyzed by gunfire during a deadly high-speed pursuit. On October the 12th of 2020, officers responded to reports of two suspects breaking into tractor trailers at a BP gas station. Police then respond to the Pilot Travel Center, where they catch the pair red-handed breaking into another tractor trailer. And upon realizing they'd been caught, the duo jumped into a U-Haul truck and sped away from the scene, initiating a pursuit. Ten eighty with this U haul box truck coming out of the back of the pile. Adam David five eight four nine five. AD five eight four nine five Arizona. Can we get somebody with sticks? We're going south on uh, oh, 1050, 1050. Okay, he's 1050. The U-Haul just struck the front driver's side of another vehicle while trying to turn onto US-29, but the suspect continued speeding down the road, and at one point it became apparent that he was purposely trying to ram into others' vehicles. He's going to be wrecked. Can we get Granville ahead of us with some stop sticks? South on 29, opposite lane. That's him. We'll stay back a little bit. You're not going to be able to pit him. He's too big. For? Passing the airport right now. Now we want to get Meriwether, see if we can get stop sticks out Lutherville. They're turning their headlights out. They're going to hit somebody head on here in just a second. Now I want to advise Meriwether. I'm on the phone with him. Go for Speed 76. Median traffic coming up on Couch Street. 
still traveling on the wrong lane of travel. I'm gonna need uh, at least two medics for the this infantry out here. Coming up on 29. Still south 127. I'm just trying to ram my car head on. Silver, what lane are the chopsticks? 40. The stocks are going to cover the whole road. The truck's going back and forth between lanes. Yeah, for all lanes, it's a 40. Oh, yeah, the 12. Again, I want to tell Grantville to back up. They are too close. They're going to get hit with the stocks. That's their 4. 59, give them some Him. 78, turn your blue lights off so he doesn't see you. He, he saw a 136, he tried to miss him. We just passed the 38. 78 is going to have him up front. Alright, one seven four, we're coming up over the hill at the thirty-nine. Everybody back up. Just so you know he's going from lane to lane, so we're at the uh, thirty-nine northbound coming up over the hill. Coming up over the hill we see we see the exit marker sign. Don't worry, don't worry. Camel. Are you able to block me at all? I'm, I'm done, I can slow him down. He's going to try to hit you, but we'll try it. Get the radio. I got it. We're 44. No, we're, we're trying to get him up. Stand down. Oh, well, I need another 44. We're coming up on a 44. We're 43 and a half now. He's fast lane, middle lane, going back and forth. And be advised, he's intentionally trying to hit the law enforcement. The ballsy suspect was now trying to ram the officers off the road as they attempted to surround his vehicle, so the cruisers backed off and resorted again to the spike strips. But when the suspect kept speeding and trying to wreck into people, they had to make a hard call. There's sticks in the road. I believe he got a good hit. There's sticks in the road. Hey, good hit on the stick. Good hit. Tempo, tempo. Four to four and a half northbound, moving to the flow line. Stay with him. Don't let him hit you. Yeah, 59, don't try to fit this U Haul. It's going to be 46 north. We have motors pulling over. He's uh, trying to hit them as well. Be advised, we're at deadly force in this situation, guys. So if we, if we get a chance, he, I'm not going to let him hurt somebody else. On the right side, I'm going to try to get to the left side of him. No units go to the right side. I'm going to try to get to the left side of deadly force. 59, give him room. 46 north now, I'll tell he's on that temple tip. Shots fired, shots fired. Shots fired, I believe I gotta hit him. I'm not gonna let him kill anybody out there. Clear, you want me to try to hit Bridge, looks like he's coming to the top. He must be ready. 
7 North. I'm across the bridge. He's trying to get you again. The U-Haul finally rolls to a stop after crashing into a concrete divider. The driver, later identified as 45-year-old Jackie Harris, was reportedly shot three times, including once in the spinal cord, which left him paralyzed from the waist down. Later, Jackie would admit to consuming an eight ball of cocaine before going on their theft spree that night, and the passenger, 42-year-old Mario Keene, walked away with minor injuries. As with all firearm discharges, an internal investigation was conducted, and it was found that the officer responded appropriately by choosing to use deadly force against Jackie, who had presented an imminent danger to the officers and innocent civilians. Cases like these serve as reminders of why it's important to comply with police, because you just never know how it's going to end. But we can proudly say the next case ended exactly as it should have with this crazy Karen's arrest. Uh, Citrus County. You're not allowed to stop me. I am because you, you, you matched the description of a wanted fugitive, okay? okay well, I'm so not wanted. On May the 29th of 2024, an officer performed a traffic stop on the vehicle of 42-year-old Alexandria Mason. A woman with a felony warrant for failing to appear in court on charges of possession of drugs and drug paraphernalia. And upon confronting Alexandria, the officer noticed indicators that she was intoxicated and she quickly became uncooperative and combative. Hey, ma'am, how you doing? Hey, do you have your driver's license registration on? Are you the, are you the RO of this vehicle? Can you state your name? Are you Alexandra? So it seems that like you got a warrant out of Citrus County. You're not allowed to stop me. I am because you you, you matched the description of a wanted fugitive. Okay. okay well, I'm so, not wanted. Yeah. So they just confirmed she's wanted out of Citrus County uh, in state pickup out of Florida. Okay, so, now, don't you drive off? No, don't I'm you do it. it? Don't I'm you do it? Saint John, she's taking off. She just got on the 95 northbound from 16. FHP is taking over lead inside lane northbound 90 miles an hour. I too, pit, pit, pit. After a 15-minute chase that reached well over 90 miles per hour on I-95, an officer performs a successful pit maneuver on Alexandria's truck, causing her to spin out and come to a stop. Alexandria was immediately arrested and placed in the back of a patrol car so that officers could search her vehicle, and inside they again found drugs, drug paraphernalia, and something new, a stolen firearm. She would subsequently be transported to the police station and charged with DUI, aggravated fleeing and eluding law enforcement, reckless driving, possession of a controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of a stolen firearm. But if you think she has substance abuse issues, wait until you see this next suspect who was driving drunk, or more accurately, driving while drinking. On March the 10th of 2023, an officer pulled over a driver whom he suspected of being under the influence, but the driver took off as soon as the officer exited his vehicle, prompting a hot pursuit. The driver, later identified as 36-year-old Courtney Dixon.
Just when the officers thought Courtney had given up, he sped off once again, but this time with severely damaged tires. So the officers took the opportunity to box him in. As the officers close in on the vehicle, Courtney gulps down a lukewarm bottle of whiskey and ignores their commands to get out of the car. So the officers proceed to make their way into the vehicle. Try to keep the dog right here by tapping on the window. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Crawl across the car for me. No. No. Crawl across the car for me. While drivers were watching the chaos that was blocking two lanes of the highway, four vehicles crashed into each other, resulting in perhaps the worst traffic jam that the small town of Fond du Lac had ever witnessed. Rubber knockers. Oh, we're gonna have a we can probably open up this fast lane though, huh? Um well the one lane we were yeah, trying to open, but I think this guy crashed into the semi northbound too, didn't he? Can we get somebody to run over there and make sure the people are okay? Yeah, that's all we wanted was just to yep. yep. try to open it up a little bit. That was a pretty good crash. While the officers figured out how they were going to clean up that mess, Courtney was transported to the police station and charged with resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and felony fleeing or eluding an officer. Hopefully Courtney enjoyed that last drink, because he'll probably be there for quite a while. But not as long as this next suspect who thought that he was Dominic from the Fast and Furious until he crashed head on into a tree. Hey, don't, no, 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 no. Put it in park. Put it in park now. Just take it off. January the 7th of 2023, an officer witnessed a driver repeatedly swerving and failing to maintain his lane. And after a few minutes of observation, he initiates a traffic stop on the driver, later identified as 30 year old Rudolph. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Officer McCord, Swap Shop Police. Reason for your stop today is you were over the 
the line over here, and then also you were in the bike lane coming down mm -hmm. east. Any reason for that? No, we were just trying to get home. Honestly, okay. like the car in front of us, I felt like they were getting kind of close, but I understand why you, you know, why you were concerned, and that's why I just like pulled over. Okay. What was your reason for coming in here? Uh, it was com it was honestly because like that car that was really close. I was like concerned and concerned for what? Yeah, we have a newborn and I didn't want any complications. Like honestly, you can look in the uh, back, you can check all that, and like. Honestly, what do you mean by complications? No, what I meant by like I didn't want you to think that there was anything concerning. Any weapons in the vehicle? No, no. Any illegal drugs? No. How much alcohol have we had tonight? I think a half a Yes, sir. Okay, how, about, how about you, boss? Uh, probably less than her, but check my ID. It's just everything's good, man. We're literally like. How many? How much did you have to drink? Is what I'm asking. Uh, probably from one or two. Got, yeah, but one or two what? Left no, at like. At like six o'clock p.m., man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you left at me. six o'clock p.m. Yes, like we left you my apartment. I'm wondering because you guys are saying you come come from the restaurant. I can smell the intoxicants coming from the vehicle. So I'm just trying no, to see if you're that. safe it's to drive. Totally the reason why I stopped you is because you were going over the, the line in the bike lane coming down East Avenue and then also the line over here. So that's why I'm trying to figure out. So how many drinks did you have, sir? Um, check. Probably like two. This means he's revoked, right? Two real nine? Yes, that was revoked. Hit up Leanne, yeah, she can confirm that. Dispatch had informed officers that Rudolph was driving on a revoked license, and the officer then returned to ask him to exit the vehicle, and that's when he began to display suspicious behavior. All right, Rudolph, so here's what's going on. Um, I'd like to make sure that you're safe to operate a motor vehicle, so I'd like to run some field sobriety tests on you. Is that okay? Uh, let me talk to my wife about it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it regardless. No, that's okay. Okay. I just want to know what she thinks about it. Is it that's fine, right? Well, she can... She's I just hearing. want to talk to her about it, right? That's okay. What do you want to talk to her about? Exactly what you said. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. You can ask. Thank you. Bro. Keep the window rolled out, though. Just open the door. It's locked. Try it. <laughs> hey, Rudolph. Hey, open yeah. the door. No, 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 I was just. Okay. I told you exactly what I was going to do. Okay. What was he saying? Let's let's do that now. Okay. Um. Can I finish talking to her? No, I'm telling you to get out of the vehicle right now. Okay. Exactly. Four forty gets starts. Another one. Ten forty for now. He's possibly five five. Locked himself in the door. Hey, don't. No, 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 no. Put it in park. Put it in park now. He's taking off. Four six, we're going westbound. Pulling in apartment complex, 1050. Foot bell, foot bell, foot pursuit. The pursuit ended with Rudolph crashing into a tree after reaching speeds of over 100 miles per hour and swerving out of control. He wasn't ready to end the chase, however, as he immediately hopped out and fled on foot, leaving his girlfriend behind in the car. Stop! Stop! Do it now! Police department! Stop! Taser deployed. Stop. Oh my god. Roll over to your side. Do it now. 1046 with the male driver. Do not move. There will stay with him. One female passenger. The next squad can check on her. Are you injured? Do you want to honest answer? Yes, I want an honest answer. Do you really want to answer? Do you really want to know? I can give you this answer. He's cooperative now. No, I'm cooperating. But do you really Are you want injured? To I'm asking you a question. Alright. You good for now? Yeah. Did she run? No, she fell out. No, no, no. I fell out, yeah. I just talked to my daughter. I don't even know if that's child's mine. Hey, thanks for not hitting me. <laughs> thanks for not hitting me. Hello? I don't know. Somebody was laughing. Nobody's laughing. I don't give a So you think I deserve to die? You, okay? you think I deserve to die? Are you injured right now? I got an ambulance coming. <sighs> Do you need an ambulance? Sir, no I don't. Okay, are you, are you injured? No, listen, I'm gonna tell you what the situation is. You can take it however you want. Okay. I know that you felt that I was under the influence and you weren't gonna let me go. One more. Do you need to be checked out by an ambulance? Rudolph. What does that mean if I need to be checked out I'm by asking ambulance? if you're injured. Yeah, and I'm asking you, what does that mean? Because I feel, in, I'm in pain. 
Okay, where? I'm in pain in my entire body. Okay. Your whole body hurts? But, yes. Anything specific yes. other than your whole body? I can't tell because I'm... Yeah, she's a passenger. I think she's just in shock. Can you pass me at uh, Cat 6, please? No. Do you remember what happened? <laughs> Nancy, you split up and I, I jumped out the car. Why were you guys running? He drank just a little. Okay. And it wasn't as much as he thought. And we were sitting there forever. And then he just said, I have to go. And he's not even a bad person. And he's just... Nobody's saying he's a bad I person. I know, but... <laughs> Wait, did you just ask him? Yeah. What do you just ask you? No, no, I can ask walk. that, right? Walk. You can walk. Why are you asking weird questions? Is that water? No, we don't have any Sit water. Down. <laughs> Is there any way to have water? No, we do not have any water. Is there I any... see about getting you some, but you gotta water. be cooperative. You can, see, oh, you can see about getting some? What's in your mouth? Dude, I just fell on the floor. Like, you can look. Yeah, like dirt. It's not, oh, yeah. That's okay. We'll work on getting it. Just please sit down. What's the time frame for that? No time frame. Are you gonna be cooperative or not? No, are you gonna hurt me if I'm not gonna hurt you? No, but sit down. Just sit in the car. You're not getting water right now. Put your feet in. The fire department arrived shortly after to assess Rudolph's reported body pain, but the conversation did not go as they had expected. We're here to help you with any okay, medical so needs. If you're here to help me, I need water. And we don't carry water with us. Do you have any type of fluid? Not, not that we can Rudolph, give you Do you have any, like, any pain or injuries? No, I'm trying to tell you that I do. Okay, can you tell I'm us that? Asking, Look, I'm not going to give you water. So you okay, can you so, tell us about your injuries? So, the injuries that I have, yes, I can't really talk about them because you're saying that you can't aid them. So you're declining medical I'm assistance. I'm not declining medical assistance. Okay, then tell us what's wrong. asking for medical assistance. For what? And the simplest version is I'm saying it's, I need water. If you cannot provide me with that, I understand. And I wish it wasn't that way. But like right now, medically, I need water. You tell me I can't, I can't provide that to me. So fortunately, like it looks like I'm at this. So I don't want that. Okay, yeah, we, we, that's not something that we, we can take you to the hospital where they have water. Yeah. And then what are the other options? Because, like, I don't want to die. Right, we wouldn't let you die. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. Because, like, right now I'm saying I need water. Right. And it feels like it's, you know, dire. Like, you're looking at me song, saying that you can't provide me with that. Like, you can't provide me with the Bible. Right, because we don't carry that. Well, that's okay. not something that we, we carry. That's okay. I understand. We have other needs, needs of, or means of giving you that if we feel that. I understand. So what, like, how does that work? That would be like giving you an IV with fluids and things like that, but that might not quench your thirst. But is that the only chief complaint you got, though? Um, Are you doing okay right now? You know, I'm not. I'm not doing okay mentally. It's okay. tough for me. I know where I stand, and I know what the situation is, yep. and I know that I made a bad decision, but I'm trying to say that, like, realistically, I feel like I need some water. Uh, yeah, so you're not too concerned with that. No, we'll, we'll, water. we'll get you water where we're going. We don't have water out here. What's the timetable with that? Like, 15 minutes? All right. I just said, oh, okay. Thanks for taking Rudolph was subsequently transported to the police station, where he refused to perform field sobriety tests or a breathalyzer and was hit with a total of seven charges, including vehicle fleeing and eluding an officer, OWI third offense, OWI causing injury, prohibited alcohol content causing injury, resisting or obstructing an officer, operating with a prohibited alcohol content, third offense, and second degree recklessly endangering safety. And in addition to all of that, he was also given $1,300 in traffic citations. As wild as that may seem, it's not the farthest a suspect has gone to get away from the police. That award might have to go to this next suspect, who decided to hitch a ride on a passing vehicle. On January the 27th of 2024, dispatch received a call from a woman claiming that her friend was being threatened by her boyfriend. Officers arrive on scene and are met by the witness and the scared victim. The suspect was inside of a nearby vehicle and later identified as 40-year-old Juan Valdez. He's running from John. Oh my God, it's a black and he's out. Here, come back here. He tried to kill him last night. Here, come back here. <laughs> hey, does John have any weapons right now? No, I, well, yeah, there's probably knives and stuff in the house. John carry a gun? Hey, John, what's going on right now? He will fight back. Hey, Tino, stop that car if he takes off.
Juan initially fled the scene but decided to circle the block and return to see if he could work things out with his lady, but when that didn't work, he then took off again, and that's when the pursuit really flew off the rails. I'll be back in front of the Westbound on Shady Point. Northbound David Way. Okay, Trying to carjack somebody. He's trying to carjack a victim vehicle holding on. Juan was taken to the hospital and treated for two bullet wounds to the torso and then released to officers for processing. He would later be booked into the San Joaquin jail on five felony charges, including false imprisonment, evasion, resisting arrest and committing a felony while out on release or parole for a prior felony, and carjacking. Perhaps the next time, he'll have a plan B in case of possible vehicle malfunction, but this next duo wasn't about to let a wrecked vehicle slow them down. On May the 27th of 2024, police were made aware of a stolen Hyundai being occupied by two teenagers. An officer caught up to the vehicle near John Glenn International Airport, where they attempted to initiate the stop, but the vehicle only increased in speed, and the pursuit got crazier from there.
The officer attempted to get in close enough to pit the vehicle, but the suspect managed to evade him and speed away. However, their plan began to fall apart when their vehicle started visibly falling to pieces. Both teens would be arrested and taken to the police station without any further incident. A look at their records revealed a history of car theft, and both teens were subsequently taken to juvenile detention to await their hearings. Hopefully they'll learn their lesson now before they possibly end up like this next suspect, who barely escaped with his life after a horrific crash. See, looks clear. We can smash if we need to. On August the 6th of 2023, following another attempted police stop, a suspect speeds away, leading officers on a high-speed chase through town. As speeds get in the excess of 100 miles per hour, officers attempt to keep up and maintain sight of the vehicle.
The suspect continued to speed through the residential area, crashing over speed bumps and blowing through several stop signs. Eventually, the chase spills back onto the main road, where disaster suddenly strikes. from the front because I can't see through the okay go ahead yeah we're moving from the front going up here to the clear yep 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 nothing in the back I can see through the middle here. watch live wires just in case I got your feet go ahead Given the state of his vehicle, the suspect is lucky to have escaped with only minor injuries. He was subsequently transported to the hospital and then to the police station without further incident. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one and don't forget to subscribe.